Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to SQL Server Performance Monitoring and Tuning video brought to you by SQLWorkshops.com. In this video, we will talk about TempDB allocation contention. TempDB allocation contention can happen when you create temporary objects, that is, temporary table or table variable concurrently from many sessions. You can reduce TempDB allocation contention by adding additional files for TempDB and implementing trace flag 1118. Let's look at an example. To practice this example along with me, you need the SQL test tool. If you don't have the SQL test tool, you can go to the website sqltest.org and click on download. There you will find a link to install SQL test. Once you have SQL test tool installed, you can click on File, Open Online Examples. There you will find the example SQL test underscore tempdb allocation contention. Let's press OK to open this example. In this example, we create a table called tab72. This table has three columns. Column 1, which is C1 integer primary key clustered. Column 2 is C2 integer. Column 3 is character 2000. We are inserting 2000 rows into this table. Column C1 and C2 will have values from 1 until 2000. Column C3 will have replicate character 8 2000 times. And we are creating store procedure 1 and 2 here. In store procedure 1, we use a table variable. This table variable has only two columns, C1 and C2 integer. And we are inserting 16 rows from tab 72 into this table variable. For PROC2, we create a temporary table instead of table variable. And we insert again the 16 rows. We will talk about PROC3 and PROC4 later. Let's press OK to create the table and the store procedures you can click on Workload 4 and Start Current. Created. Now you can click on Settings and Comments and copy these statements into one of our Management Studio windows. There we can look how many files we have currently for TempDB. We have one data file and one log file. Let's see if we have any trace flags for this instance of SQL Server. We have no trace flags. Now, Let's execute this query. Here we are executing PROC1 in a loop for 100 times, and we are repeating this for 120 seconds. And we are calling this batch using 24 threads concurrently. Let's start this workload. Let's look the average execution time. The average execution time is 230 or 220 milliseconds. To look at this time in milliseconds, you can click on Tools and you can click on Average DB Time in milliseconds. So the average time is around now 163. Let's go to SQL Server and let's look at the weights. Here I am selecting weight type, weight time, weight resource from the request data structure where program name is SQL Test. There you see page latch UP weights page latch sh weights on database id2 file id1 and page id1 page id1 is the pfs page this is the typical tempdb allocation contention let's look at what is this page 211 you can go to this article from microsoft where they explain about these pages here is the explanation about the GAM page. Here is the explanation about the SCAM page. And here is the explanation about the PFS page, page free space. Here you see the first page, the page ID 0 is the header page. The second page, that is the page ID 1, is the PFS page. And the third page, uh, the page ID 3, is the SCAM page. When you go here, you see the contention is on 211. So the page ID 1 is the PFS page, and this is the uh, typical TempDB allocation contention. Let's go back to the SQL test tool. Let's cancel this query. 
we look here, the average execution time is under 36 milliseconds. Now let's use PROC2. PROC2 is doing the same thing except it uses temporary table. Let's do start current. It's not under 86. It is quite high. The average execution time is quite high. Let's go to SQL Server and look at the weights. There you see the weights are not on the PFS page, instead on page 116. This is um, metadata contention. This is what is called TempDB metadata contention. I have a separate video explaining TempDB metadata contention if you are interested. Now let's go back to the workload. It's quite slow. Let's cancel this query. What we are going to do now, look at this article, recommendations to reduce allocation contention in SQL Server. Here, Microsoft recommends to add additional files for TempDB to reduce allocation contention. If you have less than eight logical processors, you add same number of files for TempDB data as the logical processors. If you have more than eight logical processors, you add eight data files, and if necessary, that is if you still have contention, then you add additional files. And they also recommend that you implement trace flag 1118 to reduce the SCAM page contention. Let's do this. To add additional files to TempDB, I will go to workload three. Here, I had seven files. I already have one data file, of course, and I make them all same size, 64 megabyte. And I change the log file size to 512 megabyte. To create additional files and modify the existing files, I use a placeholder instead of the directory location. The placeholder in this case is called TempDB data file location because I don't know the directory structure in your computer while you are practicing this example. SQL test uses the file called find and replace. Here it looks for the placeholder and it takes the directory name and it substitutes it here when you execute this workload three. So you have to create this file called find and replace. Here is an example definition of these placeholders. And the file needs to be created in the document SQL test directory. The file name is find and replace. So now let's create additional files for TempDB. Let's do start current. This will now make the total number of files to TempDB as eight. Let's go to SQL Server Configuration Manager and add the trace flag, like Microsoft recommends, 1118. We add the trace flag, we apply, press OK, and restart this instance of SQL Server. Let's look now how many files we have for TempDB. We have nine files, one log file, eight data files. All data files are of same size. This is very important when you add additional files for TempDB. And here we check for trace flag. Yes, we have trace flag 1118. Now let's go to workload one and let's repeat executing this PROC one. Let's do start current. Now it is faster. It's taking 57, 56 milliseconds. Let's go back and look for weights. So currently there are few weights for this PFS data structure on different files. Few weights on this PFS data structure. So we still have contention. So what I'm going to do is cancel the query and add additional files for TempDB. Here I am adding file number nine until file number 24. So altogether, I will have 24 files because I have 24 CPUs. Let's create these additional files and let's restart our SQL instance. It's always a best practice when you add files 
to restart the instance so the proportional fill can continue. So the restart is complete. Now let's go to workload one and let's execute this workload again with proc one. Let's start current. The execution time has dropped now. It is 48 milliseconds or 47 milliseconds. Let's go and look for weights. We have one page latch weight, not many like what we saw before. So the page latch weights have decreased and the average execution time is 45 milliseconds. Now what we will do is execute PROC2. PROC2 is going to use temporary table. Let's do a start current. There you see the execution time is quite high. We have 24 files for 10 TB data and we have trace flag 1118 implemented. If you go and look at the contention, we have contention on the metadata. So we adding additional files and reducing this allocation contention did not help when using temporary tables. I discuss about this in a different video. Let's go back and look at the store procedure three and four. Here we have a store procedure three, which inserts 160 rows and it also declares C3 column part of the table variable. And store procedure PROC4 is very similar to PROC3. It also has column three and it also inserts 160 rows compared to PROC1 and 2 three and four are a bit heavy. Three uses table variable and four uses temporary table. We already created these store procedures. Now we will go and execute the store procedure three, which is based on table variable. Let's do a start current. You see the execution time is around 1.7. Let's look at what kind of contention we have. We have page latch contention on the PFS data structure. We have 24 files. We have the trace flag 1118 and we are using table variable. But this table variable does not get few rows inserted. It has 160 rows and quite large rows. This leads to PFS contention because SQL Server is filling up additional pages that belong to the table and it has to update the PFS data structure. Interestingly, they all belong to the same file. Let's see if this was accidental. Now you see 13, there you see 18 and 13. Now here you see again 18. Let's press F5. It gets better now. It gets better, less weights and the performance should be better. It's around 664. Of course, we cannot compare with PROC1 because our payload is higher. Now let's cancel this query and let's execute PROC4, which is using temporary table instead of table variable. Let's do a start current. There you see it is again 1.5, 1.6. Let's go and look at the contention that we have F5. This also has now contention on PFS pages and once in a while it has metadata contention and again we see contention on the same file. Let's press F5. Now it is a bit different. Now we have metadata contention. Let's make a summary. When you have 10 dB allocation contention, you can add additional data files for 10 dB and implement trace flag 1118. This will reduce the contention. Adding additional files and implementing the trace flag is not a foolproof way. You might still have some amount of contention. Concurrent creation of temporary table from many sessions can lead to TempDB metadata contention, which can be as worse as TempDB allocation contention. In that case, you might have to use 
table variable. See my other video on TimDB metadata contention. Let me tell you something about mixed extents and trace flag 1118. When I was part of Microsoft SQL Server development team during SQL 7.0 release, we changed the page size which was 2 kilobyte in 6.5 to 8 kilobyte in 7.0 extent, which consists of 8 pages, started using 64 kilobytes since 7.0, which used to be 16 kilobyte in 6.5. What this means is small tables started using 64 kilobytes instead of 16 kilobytes. Some customers add problem upgrading to SQL Server 7.2, especially when they add lot of small tables, like thousands of small tables. Suddenly they needed four times larger storage space to keep the same database. To make their life less painful, Microsoft introduced mixed extents. With this concept, instead of allocating a full extent for an object, SQL Server will allocate page at a time up to eight pages, and then it will start allocating full extent. I would recommend customers should implement the trace flag 1118 on all of their instances because space is not the issue anymore. Thanks for listening. If you have any comments or suggestions, send me an email. Bye.